much important. Um, it's true, I think, that at UK ABC has been competing uh, for this space for a while with other groups who are interested in representing British trade in Algeria. And I feel from uh, independent objective reports that UK ABC has kind of pulled ahead in the, in the race. So I congratulate Zach for staying the distance. This is not an advert, it's simply uh, a fact which is so, so well done and getting um, everything together. Um, this, uh, that is now growing. And when I was talking to the, the president in uh, December last year, he said, when are you going to bring your prime minister? Well, of course, the awful situation that took place in the Amalas actually meant that the Prime Minister decided to visit Algeria. And, of course, Algeria is now very much in his mind because it was a hugely successful visit. He had tremendously good conversations <coughs> with the Prime Minister and the President. And when I saw him at Downing Street more uh, uh, just uh, quite recently, he again reminded me of the visit and the success of that visit. Uh, because what we are seeking to do is something really quite profound. And this is a proper partnership. And it's a partnership which embraces a number of key areas. For example, as a result of that terrible tragedy of a few weeks ago, there is now a security link between the two countries which never existed before. And the most senior people in our intelligence services were on the plane going out to Algeria to talk to their counterparts. And so that is one aspect. The other aspect is that the President completely understands that the uh, upgrading of education and health is important and to give opportunities to young people. Again, there are significant investment opportunities available to British businesses and to developing the English language, which is something which is evolving rather rapidly in the country. And then, of course, there are the actual business opportunities. This is a country with immense wealth huge resources, both uh, physical and human. And what I can tell you is that I have, in all my time visiting many, many countries, have never been received with quite such friendship and enthusiasm. We now have a very, very powerful bilateral relationship. And therein lies the opportunity. And um, just to also elaborate a little bit more, the energy minister in Algeria, Mr. Yusuf, is my counterpart. He has been charged to work with me and everybody else involved in making sure that we actually translate this business relationship into reality. And if there are blockages and impediments, it is up to him to help us together, working together, to try to deal with them. And he's been charged to do this by the President. And I think that's a very firm commitment. Um, Alistair Burt, the Minister uh, in the Foreign Office, was in Algeria just the other day. The self-same Mr. Yusfi, the Energy Minister, will again soon be in London, and again this will be taking on the relationship even further. So what we're seeing is the emergence of something which I think is quite different from what happened before, and therein lies the business opportunities. And I've been talking to a whole number of firms about what the opportunities are in Algeria. In fact, I had a list this morning sent from our embassy in Algiers of the key target areas which are now being focused on. And there's a real excitement of the possibilities to follow. So I have huge enthusiasm. Um, I know that the, uh, we're working very closely with the embassy here in London. We have an excellent relationship with them, with UKTI, with the, our operation in Algiers. So I hope that the government uh, here, with a prime ministerial imprimatur now, which wasn't there before, will lead the way to a, certainly an opening up of the bilateral relationship and investment opportunities. And I just think that in building those relationships, there are going to be some very significant opportunities. And I hope very much to assist in any way I possibly can to fulfill that. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I can't stay, but I'm afraid the Chief Whip and I would be having a conversation which would not be very enjoyable if I didn't go now. But I wish you well this afternoon, and I'm so sorry to miss the contributions of everybody else, but thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. First, it's a very, very impressive um, place where Algeria sits in the international market, in particular in the international energy markets. Uh, then there's a regional uh, spot that Algeria occupies, and in the region, Algeria is a major heavyweight both in North Africa, but also uh, in comparison 
on certain parameters with uh, the Gulf countries, which are oil exporters and major ones in their own right. And thirdly, Algeria, as an economy, posts some really very interesting opportunities over the next few years, including challenges, and some of us know what the challenges are, but uh, there are opportunities to take note of, and I shall share some of these with you. So if we begin by looking at um, the um, major uh, area in which Algeria distinguish, distinguishes itself on the world scene, obviously oil production and gas production uh, stand out, and Algeria is and will remain a major player for uh, years to come. If you take a look at uh, the difference between 2012 and 2017, uh, you have these upward sloping charts for both oil and for gas. I'm sorry if you're in the back and can't see them. Um, but essentially, the, the point is to show that Algerian exports and reliance on Algerian exports in the world is set to, set to continue. Now, if we look beyond the conventional energy story, um, the, the, the next question in energy markets in the world today has to do uh, with shale oil and shale gas. Only five years ago, we didn't have a very good picture of what shale gas would apply for energy markets, and now we're on the verge of observing gas independence, gas autonomy in, in an economy as large as the United States. Um, so the question that poses itself immediately is what happens if shale oil and shale gas get developed and then again here, what we find is that Algeria is among the club of nine countries uh, that are set to dominate uh, global uh, shale gas markets going forward. And so if you look, the major player here in terms of recoverable shale gas resources, so these are reserves that we think these countries have. Uh, again, the technology around this is, is, is in process. But we've got China first, the USA next, then Argentina, Mexico, South Africa, and then the, there's a group of countries here that have similar uh, proven reserves to date. This is, again, technology to date. And that's Australia, Canada, Libya, and Algeria. And what we know about the rest of the world is only roughly three and a half times what Algeria uh, possesses today. So it's a very, very uh, encouraging picture for the time when uh, we do actually observe this uh, possibly imminent revolution in energy markets. Um, if we look at... Um, Algeria in the region. So we've, we've now just discussed Algeria in the world. If we, if we look at Algeria in the region and compare it to some other players in the region, uh, if we look at total investment as a percentage of, a, of GDP, Algeria towers above the rest of the region, including countries that are most directly in need of investment, such as uh, Egypt today. Algeria is, is way ahead and will remain uh, way ahead for, for years to come. If we look at what constitutes uh, a comfortable economic position, uh, how do we determine whether a country is comfortable? It's sort of like determining whether a person is comfortable. Uh, you take a look at their bank account, if you can, or ask them. Uh, if you look at Algeria's external position, Algeria's bank account is very, very comfortable. In particular, if you look at its current account balance, uh, you compare that with Saudi Arabia, Algeria is uh, 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 right after Saudi Arabia here, and here, obviously, we've got deficits in these countries. Uh, if you look at gross official reserves, Sa uh, Algeria is ahead of Saudi Arabia in terms of months of import cover. Uh, Meaning, has, she's how got, much? Uh, she has another commitment uh, at 5 o'clock, and thank you very much for, uh, for uh, coming. If there is any quick questions, uh, we're very happy to take a few questions before she leaves. I, I've got a question. Uh, it, was, it was about the um, months of import cover in, in terms of reserves. You look at Libya, for example, which has about half of 170 billion frozen, the other half frozen, unfrozen. Rather. We took that as all unfrozen. What would the figures for Libya be, do you think, with only a certain, uh, population of 6 million compared with 32 um, million or something? Uh, the, uh, Libya today has, um, the, the, the trouble is frequency of data in Libya, and uh, it's difficult to have up-to-date data, but reserves in Libya are, are around 110, I think, central bank I, I reserves. More, but, uh, we, don't, we don't really uh, have high frequency data coming out of the central bank here. Yeah. Huge in, inward investment in Algeria, in terms of standing the last compared to other countries. 
And yet you talk about packets of opportunity, and it's important. And to me, I, I, I relate inward investment into opportunities, that large figure in the red. And yet when you look at the packets of opportunities for us to look at, you're, you're way below the, the, the median. Um, they, don't, they don't seem to relate. This is a not inward investment, it's total investment. It's the public expenditure pipeline. So it's domestic investment. So it's investment. So it's not foreign direct investment coming into the country. In fact, one of the... Uh, I would like now to hand over to uh, Ali Gassai, the um, um, Trade and Economic Attaché of the Algerian Embassy, uh, who is here with us this afternoon representing the Embassy to uh, talk to us about uh, or give us some thought. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody, and uh, we welcome uh, every one of you in Algeria, in April with uh, Mr. Zak. I think that, uh, I hope that you will have a very interesting uh, trade mission. Uh, I want to add uh, something for the expose, to say that uh, the DGP of Algeria for uh, the last year, 2012, was uh, 192 billion dollars, and uh, that the reserves of, of currencies is uh, 198 billion dollars, and that the, the program for uh, public investment, 2010-2012, uh, has a big uh, envelope, financial uh, envelope, of $286 billion. This is 2010-2014. Uh, 2010-2014, yes. yes. So we have a very large uh, investment program in many spheres, infrastructures, uh, agriculture, health, education. I need to thank the UKBC, who is working uh, now from two years to improve this movement of uh, uh, Exchange. links, exchanges between uh, Algeria uh, and uh, Algeria. And uh, our ministers uh, have a very interesting uh, trip for this mission, and uh, we are here to help you uh, and uh, to give you some documentation if uh, necessary and to, to give you some uh, addresses and uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Kassai, for this uh, very insightful information. And uh, it's very nice and good to hear. I mean, the doors are open for people who are looking for uh, opportunities, for help from the embassy, from UKBC, from other uh, platforms who are linking the uh, two countries. Um, before we go to the um, uh, Q&A, I think uh, I will present uh, you to uh, Professor Las Famazien. He is a professor in finance from Cass Business School. And he is going to talk to us about the uh, uh, financial uh, sector uh, investment the opportunities the in Nigeria. How it's going to help you in doing your business. And secondly, to give you some ideas probably about how to invest in non-oil related sector which is really something that uh, yes, that, that I mentioned here is the, is the uh, where we can develop this uh, financial center in, uh, in, in really London is the, is the so focus so of the whole UK economy so if you exclude London uh, the uh, I mean this uh, gathering and this meeting uh, first of all I'd like to thank you all for coming and spending time to be with us this afternoon and uh, this gathering is actually to highlight as well the trade mission we are organizing on the 14th of April. Um, um, relations between the two countries are, as Lord uh, Rizby mentioned, uh, the, uh, these companies, British companies coming along because uh, they said that would be fantastic for us to have a choice. We've been really stuck to the French system, the French way of doing things for a long time and uh, uh, they said we are really here to assist and, uh, and work with you to see how can we overcome this issue, the system they had to really uh, work around it to make uh, the or accommodate the uh, British companies in different sectors to be able to enter the market and, and um, sort of operate in, in the country. But they were definitely very pleased to have uh, sort of companies coming uh, and seeing that there is an option, there is a, there is a choice, there is a, uh, 
um, so way of negotiating business uh, compared to having only one provider or one link or one one country to work with.